Alexander were boss and bodyguard. Both of them came out of the projects. They were tough, street smart, and familiar with violence. But it was the night when shots rang out and Tupac's death hung thick in the air that Frank's world shattered. And suicide seemed to him his only way out. We in the war zone, we're the war zone, we're your gun. The violent world of gangster rap. The world of rap star Tupac Shakur. Also, Alexander. I was just a part of it because I was the bodyguard. Tupac chose me himself after being tired of uh, a rotating schedule of bodyguards. I was living his life. So my personal lifestyle was his life. For one year, Frank Alexander lived alongside Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight, the CEO of Death Row Records. Sex, uh, drugs, um, the money, the cars, the homes, Mercedes Benz, Rolls Royces, Jaguars, a lot of fights, a lot of fights. Frank's job was to protect Tupac from the violence. No easy task. Tupac had a, an urge to fight, and he liked fighting. Like Tupac, Frank had grown up around violence in the projects. I was a little kid, and to go to school was a struggle. Things would get thrown at us from off of uh, the floors, like refrigerators, bathtubs, and uh, eggs. That was the big thing. And then uh, eventually it became uh, shootings. People would shoot down at you. As Tupac's number one bodyguard, Frank accompanied him everywhere, from recording studios to video and film shoots like this one from the movie Gridlocked. Lately I've been feeling like my luck's been running out. Time was running out for Tupac Shakur. On September 7, 1996 in Las Vegas, he was riding in a BMW driven by Suge Knight. Frank was following in a Lexus. Cadillac rolled up, an arm came out, and it just started firing into uh, the BMW. I ran up to the back of the BMW, and I was thinking, oh my God, they're dead. They're dead. There was absolutely no way that either one of them in that car was alive. But both men were alive. Tupac, however, died seven days later. His killer has never been found. You had a special rapport with Tupac, a special connection, because you essentially came from the same place. How did the death of Tupac affect you personally? I was carrying the guilt, and I was carrying the uh, responsibility of his death heavily on my heart, heavily on it. What was the lowest point for you? I got to the point of suicide. Um, my marriage uh, was just about over. Uh, my wife had left me on Christmas Day of uh, 1997, Christmas. And I was smoking pot still, trying to find that uh, relaxation, trying to find that uh, way out. And my head just started getting filled with death. All I could think about was death. I just thought about how it would be not to have to deal with the world anymore. Death was just all in my head. So all I wanted to do was die. What finally turned your life around, Frank? The Lord. I found God. <laughs> it turned my life around. Um, my, like I said, my wife had, um, had left, and I was reaching out, and I was trying to find friends to talk to. And I had uh, been asked to go to this church several times by a friend of uh, my wife's and I. I said, okay, I'll go. I was at that point in my life to where I knew this is what I needed, and I needed to be saved, and I needed to be saved fast. Did you ask Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior? I asked Him into my heart. Uh, he immediately jumped into my heart. Uh, when I was baptized, it was um, full submerged underwater. When I came up out of that water, I literally felt like the whole entire world had been lifted off of my shoulders because I had been carrying it around. And I, I, I was just a new person. It was great. It was marvelous. The very next day, Frank turned on the television and found the 700 Club. Pat Robinson was saying, 
families in crisis, families in crisis. And I watched it from the time it started to the time it ended. And there was uh, this one particular testimony that uh, related to my situation with my wife and I. And at that point, I realized that this was a great show. I called the 700 Club and uh, they prayed for me right there on the line. Frank also called Laurie, his wife, to watch the 700 Club with him. Frank and I had been having problems for a while and for the longest time I had prayed and prayed and prayed that the Lord would come into our lives and bless our marriage. I said, Lori, I said, I'm your sign. Here I am. I go, I was just saved. Uh, you've been praying that we have a um, spiritual marriage, that we go to church together, and here I am. I'm ready. Your prayers have been answered. Lori's prayers were answered that day. She and Frank now have a loving marriage. And most of all, Frank is a new man. I'm happy. I have joy. Uh, I don't think about death. And Frank is no longer driven by guilt over Tupac's death. Instead, another passion drives him. My drive right now is to try and uh, reach as many young people as I can because I believe that the Lord has brought me to this point by using Tupac. I've taken a baton, and I'm just running with it now. That's my sole goal and purpose. I believe the Lord has guided me to that. It's just something you can't turn your back on. And you know he's there, and you believe in it, and you know it.